Thank you again for everyone for being here today. Um, my name is Raymond. I am with Disability Rights California. I have my colleague, Leilani Pfeiffer. Um, she and I will be behind the scene to manage the Zoom and the recording. And our presenter today is Todd Hagens. Just for everyone who might not be familiar with Disability Rights California, we are a statewide nonprofit organization and we provide free legal services to people with disabilities uh, with disability related issues. We have offices throughout the state, headquarters in Sacramento. We have offices in uh, Oakland, in Fresno, in LA, and in San Diego. And we have attorneys and advocates that handle a variety of issues from special education to um, public health benefits. So today we're talking about Medi-Cal. We could also help with in-home support of services issues. We also help with um, clients of the Department of Rehab or clients of the regional center if they run into any problems with those agencies. So as I said, our presenter today is Todd Higgins. Todd lost his eyesight as a result of a traumatic brain injury in 1983. He has been employed at Disability Rights California at the Advocacy and Community Engagement or ACE group as a senior advocate since 2004 and has been working in the National Disability Rights Network for over 30 years. So without further ado, Todd, please take it away. Thanks, Raymond. Hi, everybody. My name is Todd Higgins, and it's really good to be here with you this afternoon. Um, and we're going to talk about, be talking about Medi-Cal, the basics, and we're going to be covering a lot of the ground. So I'm going to stop at different points during the presentation so we can ask questions. And um, hopefully, you know, if you have any questions that can't we can't answer, we can follow up with you after the presentation. And um, I'll just say kind of at the get-go, it's it's not crucial that you remember everything as you as you you know go away from this presentation tonight. We're always available um, to call to answer questions um, about Medi-Cal or your Medi-Cal benefits. If you get notices you don't understand, you know we're always um, available to provide um, help to to folks around um, Medi-Cal issues. Um, so we'll get into the presentation here, and um, so. It, the first slide, it's Medi-Cal, the basics. Um, so Lonnie, if you want to head on to slide two, we'll talk about what you're going to learn here today. So we're going to give you the ba some background information on Medi-Cal, what it is, um, and you know um, how California um, got the Medi-Cal program. And we're going to go over Medi-Cal eligibility basics. Um, we're going to go over specific Medi-Cal programs or different Medi-Cal programs for people with disabilities. Uh, what services does Medi-Cal pay for? Uh, Medi-Cal and other health coverage. What happens when you have Medi-Cal and other health coverage? And then applying for Medi-Cal. How does that work? All right. So next slide, please, Lonnie. <clears throat> So, um, <clears throat> um, so we want to talk about kind of who the players are here. Um, so you hear the term Medicaid um, kicked around. Um, so Medi-Cal is actually Medicaid in California. It's just what California calls Medicaid. So Medicaid is what the federal government calls um, the Medi Medicaid program. And then we just call it Medi-Cal here in California. Many states do that. Um, they take um, the word Medicaid and kind of create their own word out of it to, um, you know, to signify it's part of their state um, medical insurance, public, you know, uh, publicly funded medical insurance. So the Centers for Medicaid and Medicare Services, CMS, is the federal agency that administers the Medicaid program. They also administer the Medicare program. Um, so that's that's where um, the state gets us direction from on um, how to run the Medicaid program is from CMS. So CMS is kind of the, is the federal agency um, that dictates how states need to use um, their Medicaid money. 
So uh, the Department of Healthcare Services is a single state agency um, that administers the Medi-Cal program. And so, um, you know, they're the, the state um, part of state government that's responsible for administering the Medicaid program in, here in California. And as I said before, um, it's called Medi-Cal here in California. Um, so the Department of Health Care Service, Healthcare Services can delegate Medicaid services to other programs. Um, examples of this is in-home support services. Um, Um, Department of Social Services, and so th there are other, you know, there are there are Medicaid funded programs that are that are administered by these other entities. Um, but again, DHCS, the Department of Healthcare Services, um, the state agency has the ultimate responsibility um, for running the Medi-Cal program in California. Um, so the state plan. Uh, what that is, is um, the Department of Healthcare Services needs to submit a state plan um, to CMS, the federal entity, on what how they're going to run, you know, what services are going to be covered by Medi-Cal. So in the state plan, um, they put exactly what Medi-Cal is going to pay for, um, for people who are eligible in California. And so it describes the nature and scope of what Medi-Cal services are going to be in California. Um, it has to follow federal law regulations and guidelines. And we have a link to the California state plan um, for the Medi-Cal plan here in the presentation. Um, so the money that the, the state receives um, from the Medi-Cal program or Medicaid is called the federal far, federal participation, um, and that's what the federal government pays. So when a Medi-Cal service is uh, given to somebody, um, there's a federal financial participation to pay for that service. And um, so there are state-only Medi-Cal programs. And um, but that that, that again, um, they're run by the Department of Healthcare Services. There are other programs that are administered by the county um, and the Department of Social Services. Um, before we get into Medi-Cal service delivery models, I will pause here to see if there are any questions about kind of Medi-Cal and Medicaid um, in that part of the presentation. All right, so we'll resume uh, the presentation here and I'll move on to the next slide. So uh, Medi-Cal service delivery models, there are different ways in which um, the state has, has kind of delivered the Medi-Cal program over the years. So we're gonna talk about those and what changes um, have come, let's say in the last 10 or 15 years and what changes are predicted for the future, okay? Um, so there are two basic models. One is called fee-for-service and the other is called managed care. So fee-for-service Medi-Cal essentially is, um, is that, so any, any doctor or medical professional that signs up with the state of Department of Healthcare Services as a Medi-Cal provider. Um, so if you're in fee-for-service Medi-Cal, you can choose any provider as long as they're signed up um, with the Department of Healthcare Services as a Medi-Cal provider, you can choose any provider to, to deliver your services. And so you can go um, to those um, doctors and providers directly um, and request that, uh, you know, they, that they uh, treat you um, and, uh, and help you with uh, med medical treatment and services that are, that are included in the state plan. Um, managed care Medi-Cal is different. Um, and what that is, is um, there's a managed care plan that provides all your Medi-Cal services. So you don't have a choice to go to any provider. The provider has to be within the managed care plan in order for you to get services. And that, that, that one Medicare plan is responsible for all your medical services, whether it be 
medications, hospitalizations, um, outpatient treatment, primary care, it's all included in the one plan, okay? Um, and so that's um, that switch was made in about 2008 or 2009. Um, CMS uh, encouraged states to move towards a managed care model um, because they felt it was a more efficient way to administer the Medi-Cal program. And there, you know, they they thought there'd be a cost savings, um, and they also thought there would be improved um, services if people had a single point of contact to get all their medical care. And then, um, so there's also something called coordinated care initiative, and the, and there are certain counties that have coordinated care initiatives, in which um, what they've done in those counties is, is that they is that they've um, they've bought all the Medi-Cal programs into one uh, one body. So in those in those counties, um, all the, all the Medi-Cal services um, come under the coordinated care initiative. And that was a, a a pilot project to begin to see how this would work if um, if all the different Medi-Cal programs that were out there were coordinated under one initiative or one admin, kind of administered by one entity how that would work out. And so that coordinated care initiative um, is something that the state has been piloting now for about eight years um, to see how that would work out um, and how that would um, improve um, Medi-Cal services um, to beneficiaries of Medi-Cal. And so the counties are listed here, San Mateo, uh, San Diego, Santa Clara, Los Angeles, um, and those are the counties that the uh, this the coordinated care initiative was piloted in. So the new word you're going to hear is called Cal AIM, and that's the future of Medi-Cal in California. And so what Cal AIM is um, is designed to do is to make the whole state um, uniform as far as how it delivers Medi-Cal. Um, much like the coordinated care initiatives, all the Medi-Cal programs are going to be housed. Um, for the most part, under under one uh, one place, so you're going to go to one place to get all your Medi-Cal services, and that that's going to include, you know, more enhanced um, treatment for people that need more enhanced treatment, um, and any any kind of kind of satellite or pilot programs that Medi-Cal has tried, they're going to include in this new program called Cal Aim, and so that's kind of, that's the future um, where Medi-Cal is going in California. And so, um, when when Cal Aim comes into play, everybody who's still in fee for service Medi-Cal who hasn't already been moved into managed care is going to be moved into managed care, and it's all going to be under managed care once Cal Aim is fully up and functioning. There's a link here for more on CCI. And then. Um, there's also something called county organized health systems. So there are certain counties um, that are organized by the county, and those are managed, those are essentially managed care, Medi-Cal managed care plans that are administered by the county. Um, so there are certain people who are carved out of um, uh, mandatory enrollment into managed care, and and one of those uh, people were um, some of those people were people who are due eligible. So if you've had both Medicare and Medic Medicare and Medi-Cal, you weren't required um, to enroll in managed care. Well, that that is going to be changing, And that's starting um, the 1st of January, 2023. So that started this year that people who had protection from mandatory enrollment in Medi-Cal managed care because they because they also had Medicare, um, that that protection not to be in, taken out of fee for service and enrolled in managed care is, is taken away. And we also have a link here for the CalAIM proposal, which was uh, submitted in 2021. Um, and that'll give you more information about 
um, the proposal to switch the Medi-Cal system um, under Cal AIM in California. And so next slide is um, service delivery models continued. Um, we have a link to managed care models. Um, as I said, there are different managed care models. There are county operated systems. Um, there are two, um, two plan counties that have two plans available. Um, and then there are what are called geographically managed counties, which usually um, are counties that have several um, managed care, um, Medi-Cal managed care um, plans functioning in those counties. And, and you get to make a choice which one you want based on what providers um, would meet your needs. Um, however, if you don't pick one, you'll be auto-enrolled into um, one of those plans. If you, if when you're notified by Medi-Cal that you're being enrolled, if you don't make a choice, you'll be automatically enrolled. And so here's a map of managed care models. Um, if you want to take a look at the different counties and how they're set up in different counties, that'll give you an idea of what um, the county you live in, the type of managed care that exists there. Um, so that's um, the service delivery model. I'll pause here again um, to see if there are any questions about the different um, ways that Medi-Cal has set up managed care, fee-for-service, um, care coordinator initiative, CalAIM. I put, there's a lot in there. And, yep. Okay, so Medi-Cal services, slide six here. Um, we have full scope Medi-Cal and, and, and as opposed to limited scope um, it, that you might get due to immigration status um, um, or, the, or the ways, other ways that Medi-Cal might limit um, the Medi-Cal that you receive. Um, so full scope includes a full range of services, including long-term care services. So. Um, and what that means, if you know, is, is if you have a need for, um, you know, any kind of nursing facility or kind of more long-term care services, um, that's paid for through the Medi-Cal program. And so these programs include IHSS, multi-service senior citizens program, um, uh, CBS, which is uh, adult day beha um, behavioral health programs. Um, those are programs that um, are included in that full scope range. And um, these are these programs, um, like the MSSP, IHSS, are also are considered what are called considered Medi-Cal waiver programs. Um, so as of um, the 1st of January uh, 2020, full scope Medi-Cal um, is, is able to be provided for um, people under the age of 26, regardless of immigration status. And so that was a change um, in the law. And then started, starting um, May 1st, 2022, um, for persons over the age of 50 um, can get full scope Medi-Cal regardless, um, regardless of immigration status. So slide seven continued on Medi-Cal services. Next slide, please. Um, and here's a link of the list of services that Medi-Cal can provide. And it's an end help guide um, that gives uh, a list of Medi-Cal services that are in the state plan. And then there's another, another link to um, medical necessity, and that's another list of Medi-Cal services. And it's um, 
adult services are medically necessary if it's considered a reasonable. And it's, um, it's necessary if it's to prevent illness, to protect life, um, disability, or to alleviate severe pain. Um, then children, uh, Medi-Cal, which is called ear Early Periodic Screening and Diagnosis, the EPDST, is a special Medi-Cal program for children that pays for enhanced services. Um, and this, this is more um, to prevent illness um, in children. And, and so that's a special Medi-Cal program that children um, uh, is available to children um, through Medi-Cal. And so EPSTT services include any service that is needed, that is needed to ameliorate or correct a defect, a condition, or illness. And here's an EPSTT guides for states um, that talks more about the EPSTT program in detail. Um, so the next slide um, is eligibility for Medi-Cal, the basics. Um, so there's over 90 eligibility categories for Medi-Cal, which is a lot. And so that's why it gets very complicated. And each category has its own eligibility criteria. But there are some common themes. So first is income. Second is resources. Uh, third is immigration status. Uh, California residency. And then uh, here's Medi-Cal aid codes. Um, and it's a link to all the med different Medi-Cal aid codes. Um, when you're in a specific program, um, you're given a code for what that Medi-Cal program is. So this is a list of the aid codes for all the various Medi-Cal programs. So on to the next slide, please. Um, so first we're gonna talk about income. So earned income is uh, money that you get from working, self-employment. Self Um, Unearned income is considered state disability, um, annuities, um, anything uh, such as that that you don't work for is considered unearned income. In kind support is like shelter or food that somebody gives you, and so that can impact your eligibility for Medi Cal. So, um, so if somebody gave you paid complete your complete rent, that would count as in kind support. But if someone you know paid for some of your meals, that probably wouldn't count as in kind support. Um, but again, if if somebody's giving you um, food or shelter, it can count um, towards your Medi-Cal eligibility. So there's unavailable income, which is not counted towards your Medi-Cal eligibility. So there are funds that the applicant doesn't have access to. So it could be income brought in by an unrelated adult or um, you know, somebody who else is in the home. Workers' compensation um, is usually uh, part of this category as well. Um, and so then we have exempt income. So exempt income is general assistance, SSI, CalWORKs, CalFresh, all that is exempt um, from the Medi-Cal um, determination when determining someone's income. Um, foster care payments, housing assistance, and earnings of children under 14 are also um, not counted um, towards the calculation when determining Medi-Cal eligibility um, for a household.
So uh, slide 12, please, the next slide. So generally, um, how money is looked at in the month you receive it, um, it's considered income. And then in the, in the following month, it's considered a resource. Um, so the month you get you know, some money um, that's counted as income and, and it goes into your bank account, it, it, it counts as income. Um, and then the very next month, it's, uh, it's counted as a resource. And, and so that's how the Medi-Cal program looks at it. And so we have um, a publication here called Medi-Cal Lump Sum Payments. Um, and so it, it, this is a publication that goes over different ways people get lump sum payments. Um, it could be a back award of SSI or, or um, in-home support services payment. Um, but it, different ways that people will get a lump sum payment and how the Medi-Cal program calculates that in determining eligibility for Medi-Cal. And then we have another publication with SSI lump payments. And if if your um, your child or family member is on SSI, um, you can use this publication to uh, inform you on what you need to do and how to deal with lump sum payments. Okay, so this is the calculation. Um, of uh, for Medi-Cal eligibility and gross income deductions. So essentially when they go um, and look at income, um, there's, a, there's a $20 general income reduction. And then there's an earned income reduction and you deduct an additional $65 from the income. And then that amount is divided in half. <clears throat> and that's how um, Medi-Cal looks at your um, that's a calculation they use in determining what your income is um, for purposes of Medi-Cal eligibility. So again, they take your gross income, they, they deduct $20 for a general deduction, $65 for an earned um, income deduction. And so they take the first $85 of your gross um, income off, and then they divide that amount by two um, when looking at how much income uh, when determining eligibility for Medi-Cal. And then uh, blind work expense um, or impairment related work expense are deducted uh, before um, you divide that number by two. So there, there are work expenses, um, if, uh, blind work expenses if you're blind um, and impairment related work expenses if you're, you're uh, disabled that you can deduct from your gross income. And so um, again, those can be deducted um, from your earned income, uh, gross gross earnings, um, prior to uh, dividing that number in half um, to uh, determine your eligibility for Medi-Cal. Okay, um, so is there any questions on eligibility and the income piece? That was a lot of information. Okay, so now we're on to eligibility and resources. So as of July 2022, the asset limit is 130,000 and then 65,000 for each additional family member in the house. So the maximum of 10 in the house. And in 2024, the asset limit is expected to be eliminated completely. And so there are exemptions um, from the asset or resource limit. And so we're gonna go over what those exemptions are. So you can own your principal place of residence, um, one motor vehicle, and that's one motor vehicle per family, a personal property use in a trade or business you can have, um, personal effects, clothing, heirlooms, Wedding and engagement rings with a net value of under 100, but again, um, we we've never I've never seen that strongly enforced as far as you know valuing those things. Exempt are household items and IRAs, other other pension plans are also exempt. 
um, and that's provided the a person that the family member that it's in, uh, the name that it's in does, yeah. does not want medical. So if, if it's held in the in a person who does want medical, so again the balance is considered unavailable and not counted. Um, but the money that the that's coming off it um, is counted as income unearned income. Uh, real estate used in a business um, in a trade or business is exempt. So if if you own um, a storefront, that's exempt um, for a business. Um, life insurance policy. So each person may have life insurance policies with a combined face value of 1,500 or less. Okay, how does a person know about um, Medi-Cal know about a person's assets? So beneficiaries, beneficiaries are required to report resources within 10 days of receiving them. Um, so is there any questions on uh, resources? 15 and next slide is slide 15 and we're talking about the able able act achieving a better life experience and this is a program um, that has been set up for people on ssi and medi-cal um, that allows you to save um, in an account um, to pay for uh, kind of disability related expenses um, and the money that you save in that account does not count towards uh, against your the resource limit for medi-cal eligibility and you can put up to 16,000 a year into one of these accounts. And if you're on SSI, you can have a maximum of 100,000 in an ABLE account. And it does not affect eligibility for SSI, Medi-Cal, or other federally funded benefits. And California's program is called CalABLE. And there's a link here to the CalABLE program. Um, now we're got in Medi-Cal, there's deeming. And so um, when, uh, when a person uh, it lives with um, uh, you know, a person, they, they talk about this concept of deeming. Um, what the concept means is that they deem a certain amount of um, a person's assets or resources available um, to the person with a disability. And there's different ways that they calculate that um, in the Medi-Cal program. Um, so here's how they deem a parent to a minor child. Um, there are spouse to spouse deeming. Um, there are sponsor to sponsor deeming. And, um, and this is how we look at what's deemed. So income is deemed, resources can be deemed, um, and then we get, can get into um, um, the Medi-Cal waiver programs, which we'll talk about. There's, we're actually going to be out here next week um, doing a training on Medi-Cal waivers. Um, and what happens when you're in a Medi-Cal waiver is uh, institutional deeming. So for purposes of Medi-Cal, once you're in a waiver program, they really view you as if you live in an institution. Um, so really none of the, uh, the people that you live with in the community their income or resources don't factor in at all um, when calculating your Medi-Cal eligibility. Um, so Medi-Cal waivers we're gonna talk about here briefly. Again, we're gonna do a more in-depth training next week about waivers. Um, we got home and community-based services waivers. These are examples. There's home and community-based alternatives waiver and that has institution, institutional deeming. There's a home and community-based waiver for the developmentally disabled, and this is specifically for people that are clients of regional centers, and the application process um, is administered through the regional center, and there's institutional deeming with this waiver as well. There's a multi-purpose senior, ser senior services waiver. Um, 
an institutional deeming comes along with that waiver. There's an AIDS waiver. There's a self-determination program uh, for people with developmental disabilities, and that's also a Medi-Cal waiver program. Assisted living waiver, which is another Medi-Cal waiver, and institutional deeming goes along with that waiver. And here's a link um, that describes um, all the waivers that are available through DHCS. All right. So here we go into slide 18, which is we're talking about um, Medi-Cal basics. Um, this is continued. Um, a qualified immigrant is uh, eligible for pe uh, public benefits. They're called LPRs. Um, so battered wives, spout, um, people who are victims of traffic um, are also covered in this list under uh, different federal benefit programs. Um, if you're paroled by immigration court and granted a stay, um, you're con you're el you can um, be eligible for Medi-Cal. And so if the, if the government knows a person's in the, in the U.S. and has no intention to deport them, um, they can be eligible for Medi-Cal. And remember, full scope Medi-Cal um, under the law may be provided for persons under 26 and over the age of 50. And then re that's regardless of immigration status for under 26 or over 50. And you have to be a California resident again. Okay, so Medi-Cal, slide 19, uh, Medi-Cal programs for people with disabilities. Uh, we have MAGI Medi-Cal, which is Modified adjust, Adjusted Gross Income Medi-Cal. Um, and this is available to uh, families regardless of disability. And uh, parents and caretakers um, um, can get it at 109% of federal po poverty level. And uh, um, adults can be 138% of poverty level in MAGI Medi-Cal. Um, the pregnant, if you're pregnant, you can get Medi-Cal at 130% of, of the federal poverty level. Um, children can get it at 266% of federal poverty level. And this is a MAGI um, income and deductions list that we're providing here at a link to. And then uh, we have the federal poverty level chart, which we're gonna provide you as well. And then the HS poverty guidelines for 2023. We also have a link for that. All right, next slide, Medi-Cal programs continued. So non-MAGI Medi-Cal programs for people with disabilities. We have SSI linked Medi-Cal or 1619. We have pickled and disabled adult child. And we, uh, we described that um, when um, someone was formerly on SSI and their parent starts receiving retirement or disability benefits, they go on the disabled adult child benefit they maintain their Medi-Cal eligibility as what's called a DAC pickle. We have the Age Blind Disabled Federal Poverty Level Medi-Cal program. Um, again, if you're if you're aged or disabled, and you meet the federal uh, poverty guidelines for the Medi-Cal program, um, at 138 percent of the poverty level, um, you can get um, this uh, um, Age Disabled Federal Poverty Level program. Um, there's a working disabled program. So if you were um, ever receiving SSI or SSDI due to a disability and you go back to work, you can get into what's called a working disabled program. Um, and then you, you pay a premium for your Medi-Cal based on the, the amount of money you're earning. And the premiums tend to be pretty low in this program. There's a medically need program. So if you meet the um, medical criteria for being disabled, to get Medi-Cal, but your income is too high, 
um, you can get in the medically needy program, but you pay a share cost for your Medi-Cal. So you pay a certain amount out of pocket before Medi-Cal starts paying for your medical care. Okay, so next slide is resources for Medi-Cal programs. Um, DB101 is an online calculator that you can go to and put your resources and income into um, to let you know what Medi-Cal program uh, you would be eligible for based on your um, income and resources uh, that, you're, that you put into that calculator. And then we have a um, link here to for DAC or Disabled Adult Child, so you can go there to get more information about that program. And then you have Pickle, and we'll link to that to talk talk to you about um, how to remain how you remain eligible for Medi-Cal when you get into the DAC program. Okay, other health coverage is the next slide, uh, slide 22. So Medi-Cal is always the payer of last resort if you have other health, health coverage. So if you have Medicare or any other private insurance, um, that's gonna be your primary and Medi-Cal is gonna be the payer of last resort. Um, so child, so private insurance, Medicare, California Children's Services um, will all come before Medi-Cal paying. So applying for Medi-Cal, here's how you um, apply online. Um, so that's how you apply online. Um, you can go to the county Medi-Cal office and also um, get information about how to apply for Medi-Cal. So additional resources here on slide 24, Western Center on Law and Poverty. Um, healthcare options. This is the link to the folks that I told you you can contact about if um, to find out if you're in fee for service or managed care Medi-Cal. And then the Health Consumer Alliance. Um, that's the the people that I uh, referred the woman. Um, in Placer um, to contact about the orthotic shoes. I think they'll be helpful to do that. All right, so that's um, that's the presentation and we can open it up for questions.